Aaron Dillon here, Managing Director of AG Dillon & Co. We are closing seven pre-IPO stock funds to new investors in October. Wires need to be into the funds by October 15. Opportunities to invest into OpenAI, XAI, Grok, Databricks, Hugging Face, and a top 10 pre-IPO stock index fund. For more information about AG Dillon pre-IPO stock funds, please email aaron.dillon at agdillon.com. That's A-A-R-O-N dot D-I-L-L-O-N at A-G-D-I-L-L-O-N dot com to invest in the pre-IPO stock funds. Financial advisors only, contact your financial advisor to invest. And now for this week's September 20, uh, 27, 2024 pre-IPO stock market update. Anthropic, the AI large language model business is in talks to raise capital aiming for a valuation of $30 billion to $40 billion potentially doubling its valuation from earlier this year. This follows OpenAI's own capital raise, which values the company around $156.5 billion, up from a prior valuation in Q1. Anthropic, which generates most of its revenue through its Claude Conversational AI, projected annual revenue of up to a $1 billion in 2024. That's up 1,000% year over year. Gross profit margins have declined from 50, uh, to 55% to 38%. The company expects a $2.7 billion cash burn in 2024. OpenAI with strong financials projects $4 billion in annual revenue, roughly 5x Anthropic's projections. I'm also hearing that OpenAI December 2024 AR could be as high as $5 billion. Anthropic's valuation will be 50x its projected revenue compared to OpenAI's multiple of under 40x. Anthropic has a $25.3 billion secondary market valuation that's plus uh, 40% versus its January 2024 round. Wiz, a cybersecurity company, is in talks to sell its existing shares at a valuation between $15 billion and $20 billion, allowing shareholders to cash out $500 to $700 million. This allows Wiz's rejection of a $23 billion acquisition offer from Google in July of 2024, which would have nearly doubled its $12 billion valuation from a May funding round. The startup has raised over $1.8 billion from investors like Index Ventures, Sequoia Capital, Lightspeed, and CyberStarts. Wiz scans data stored in cloud providers like AWS and Azure for security risks and plans to pursue an IPO in the future. Wiz has a $18.2 billion secondary market valuation, smack in the middle of that primary round range discussed. That's up 52% from, from its May 2024 round. Wudabala, an Abu Dhabi-based sovereign investor, acquired a significant state in Revolut, uh, valuing the uh, fintech at $45 billion. Revolut is a UK online bank. The deal provided uh, at least $200 million for Revolut's founder, Nick Storowski, who sold $200 to $300 million worth of his shares, accounting for half of the $500 million share sale involving employees. Mutabala, along with investors like Co2, D1 Capital, Tiger Global, participated in the transaction. Revolut, with 45 million global customers and 9 million in the UK, processes over 500 million transactions monthly. Its business-to-business -business service generates $400 million. Uh, 450 million euros in annual revenue. Chime, an online bank, has hired Morgan Stanley to lead its planned IPO in 2025. The company has valued, uh, was valued at $25 billion in 2021 during a fintech funding boom driven by low interest rates. In May 2024, Chime launched a cash advance product allowing users to access up to $500 uh, of their wages before payday, aiming to grow its customer base ahead of the IPO. Chime reported 7 million active users and achieved monthly profitability, excuse me, achieved profitability in Q1 of 2024. The San Francisco-based startup offers fee-free banking services, including checking and high-yield savings accounts through its app. Chime has a $9.2 billion secondary market valuation. That's down 63% from its September 2021 round. Scale AI's revenue nearly quadrupled to almost $400 million in the first half of 2024 compared to the same period last year driven by demand from AI developers like Meta and Google. Despite the growth, the company remains unprofitable with an operating margin of $1.2 spent for every $1 in revenue, down from $1.50 last year. So it's getting better. Gross margins declined to just under 50% compared to 57% in the uh, first half of 2022. Scale hit, a, scale hit nearly $1 billion in annualized revenue, according to CEO Alexander Wang. And the startup was valued at $13.8 billion after raising capital in May and had a $980 million in cash at uh, the end of the first half of this year. Scala is a $14.1 billion secondary market valuation. That's up 2% versus that May 2024 round. 
OpenAI, the AI large language model business, originally founded in 2015 as a nonprofit to develop AI for public good, is transitioning to a public benefit corporation or PBC to pursue both social and financial goals. This shift comes as OpenAI undergoes rapid growth and aims to attract more investors, including its ongoing $6.5 billion funding round led by Thrive Capital with a $1 billion commitment. The company now has a post-money valuation of $156.5 billion. This restructuring will allow investors in the current round to earn uncapped profits if, uh, and if not completed within two years, they could request their money back. OpenAI's new voice technology advanced, uh, advanced voice mode is being rolled out to all ChatGPT Plus and team users, uh, expanding to enterprise and EDU users next week. Initially introduced in May and delayed for safety issues, this feature includes five new voices, allowing responses in over 50 languages. While it still lacks some advanced uh, capabilities like computer vision feedback, OpenAI is steadily expanding the voice op options, now offering a total of nine voices for users. OpenAI has faced a, also faced significant employee departures, including Chief Technology Officer Mira Murthy, uh, Chief Research Officer Bob McGrew, and Vice President of Research Barrett Zoff. Marathi, who served six and a half years, was instrumental in the company's operation, was briefly interim CEO last year. Uh, OpenAI's leadership has been an, seen an exodus of over 20 researchers and executives in 2024 with key figures like co-founders Ilya Stuskever, John Shulman, and President Greg Brockman also leaving or taking lead. Brockman took lead. Uh, not for nothing, there has been a lot of commentary about these employees leaving out there uh, in the media, but no one talks about the human side of these employees and how their lives change with a $156.5 billion OpenAI valuation. So let's take Mira Murati, for example. Mira Murati joined OpenAI in June of 2018. OpenAI had a sub $4 billion valuation in 2018. If she has a 1% equity, uh, that, comp that equity is now worth north of a billion dollars. So I get it. She can resign, enjoy your, her billion dollar net worth, spend time with family, travel, focus on health, sleep, et cetera. It's like good for her. I'm happy for her. You know, Mirati uh, accomplished the American, uh, really accomplished the pinnacle of the American dream. So the human element, I think, is important to look at some of these departures. I think you'll see that same trend happens at other large technology companies that have had big runs in valuation uh, where employees are able to get freedom and go somewhere else. Google is expanding its Gemini chatbot uh, app to workplace subscribers, removing the need for a separate tw uh, 20 dollars a monthly fee and aiming to boost enterprise adoption announced by Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kirian. Gemini API requests via Vertex AI increased 36 fold in eight months, while Gemini had 855 million visits from June to August 2024 compared to ChatGPT 7.5 billion. This integration targets millions of workplace workspace customers. Gemini now saves users an average of 105 minutes per week, with 75% reporting improved uh, work quality and offers nine voices with support in over 50 languages with certifications like SOC 1, 2, and 3, ISO 27001 and ISO 27701. Gemini also emphasizes security, introducing a secure, quote unquote, secure advisor for workplace, workspace, excuse me, business customers, ensuring compliance and data protection. Rippling, the HR and IT business software platform, launched Talent Signal, an AI-driven tool that evaluates new employees using task-specific metrics. The tool analyzes projects like customer inquiries for support agents or code writing for engineers, assessing how employees handle tasks and identify patterns that managers might miss. At the 90-day mark, Talent Signal categorizes employees as high potential, typical, or pay attention, providing actionable uh, feedback and allowing managers to agree or disagree with its findings. Built using AI models from OpenAI and Anthropic, the tool is currently free with Rippling considering future monetization. Early tests show talent signal helps uh, reduce bias and offers objective performance valuations tapping into AI's potential for corporate use. Rippling has a $15.9 billion secondary market valuation. It's up 18% versus April 2024 round. Andrew, the defense technology contractor, has secured two major defense mandates, a partnership with uh, Microsoft to develop combat goggles for the U.S. Army and the selection of its Ghost X unmanned aircraft system for the Army's co uh, company-level small unmanned aircraft systems, directed 
requirements. Uh, the Google's, uh, the Goggles project, excuse me, uh, part of the integrated visual augmentation system could result in orders of up to 121,000 units, generating up to 21.9 billion over a decade, pending successful testing. Uh, additionally, the Ghost X UAS, capable of 90 minutes of endurance at a 25-kilometer uh, range and a 25-pound payload capacity, has been chosen to enhance the Army's reconnaissance capabilities, marking Andrew's growing presence in the advanced military technology solutions. Andrew is a $17.4 billion secondary market valuation. It's up 24% versus its August 2024 round. Klarna, the, company, uh, the consumer credit and payments company, is expanding its uh, in-store buy now pay later service through a partnership with Adyen, integrating Klarna's installment payments into over 450,000 Adyen payment terminals across North America, Europe, and Australia. This move will make Klarna's buy now pay later options available to Adyen's vast merchant network with plans for a wider rollout. Currently, 35% of merchants offer buy now pay later online, but only half that percentage provided in physical stores, highlighting the opportunity for growth. The partnership uh, follows Klarna's recent collaboration with Zero to enable buy now pay later options for small business clients. The buy now pay later market is gaining traction, particularly among consumers living paycheck to paycheck, with 26% of this group planning to use buy now pay later in the next 12 months. Klarna has a $10.3 billion secondary market valuation. That's up 54% versus its July 2022 round. All right, let's look at pre-IPO stock performance as of September 23, 2024. Up this week, got Sync at 17.1%, OpenAI at 13.7%, Canva up 6.9%, Rippling up 5.9%, and Notion up 5.3%. Down this week, we have XAI down 5.3%, CoreWeaves down 2.2%, Cohere is down 1.7%, Epic Games down 1.6%, and Neuralink down uh, 60 basis points. Top uh, valuations, ByteDance at $301 billion, SpaceX at $229 billion, OpenAI at $157 billion, Stripes at $84 billion, Databricks is at $46 billion. Subscribe at agdillon.com slash subscribe to get the most current valuation, revenue multiples, and performance data delivered to your inbox. Okay, let's look at performance for the A.G. Dillon pre-IPO stock vintage indexes as of September 23, 2024. The 2024 vintage index top contributor since inception, Revolut, 201%. This year, year to date, Rippling, 113%. Andrew, 76%. OpenAI, 56%. Klarna, 40%. The 2024 vintage index is up 63% since inception or year to date, 2024. There are no detractors in the 2024 vintage index. Key metric averages for all vintages five years old or older, 472% cumulative uh, return since inception. 58% of that was realized or distributed to investors. Some hardcore VC metrics, 5.72 TVPI, 3.31 DPI, and 2.41 RVPI, 4.1 years to quote unquote return for the fund. Subscribe at agdillon.com slash subscribe to get the most current pre-IPO stock index fact sheets, including vintage data by year from 2005. Okay, that's it for me this week. If you have any pre-IPO stock research needs, please reach out. Thanks and see you all next week.